So I want to talk about interest rates. Any of you that are paying attention or any of you that are looking to buy a house know what the interest rates are doing right now. And if you don't, I'm going to share that with you. And I'm going to share about something that you probably never thought of. So stay tuned. We're getting started right now. So welcome back y'all. My name is Debbie Dobbins. I am your host for this episode of Your Wichita Falls. And if you pay any attention to this channel, um, I talk about all things real estate, Wichita Falls, mortgages, economy, and everything in between. And today I wanted to talk about these trends on interest rates. For those of you that are not old enough to have even been born in the 1970s, because that's when the Fannie and Freddie people started paying attention to what the rates were. But I want to share this because I think it's really important to put things in perspective from time to time, because we all have, um, you know, our limited scope of what we can remember. I, I remember it was only a year and a little bit over that ago that rates were in the high twos. And now as of the Fed this week, um, raising the interest rates three quarters of a point again, we're looking at six, mid sixes and up to sevens, a little even over seven depending on your credit score. But here's the thing. That is not what the average trends are from the 1970s to 2022, which is pretty remarkable if you think about it. Because as I've done this for so many years, I've seen highs, I've seen lows, I've seen really high and really low and somewhere in between. And if you look at historically interest rates, the average interest rate for the last hundred years, that's a long time, is 7%. Right, that's a pretty decent interest rate. Generally speaking, if you look at the bigger scheme of things. So I wanted to talk about, and I know this is gonna be a little bit boring because I'm gonna quote some statistics, but since 1971, the 30 year fixed rate loan has been um, documented by Freddie Mac, which is, you know, Freddie Mac, Fannie Mae, brother, sister. So they actually have been keeping track of that. And if you look at this over time, because, you know, think about it, 7%, 8%, 18% in certain times um, in the past was really, really challenging. Now we live in a very prosperous society. In case you didn't know that, I know some of you, you know, want to say you're not, but trust me, you can be if you choose to be. You compare these 30-year loan rates with what they have been historically. And when you hear last year, when um, 2021, when the rates are, they kept saying historically low, that meant they've never been that low in the history of mortgage rates, which is insane. So we've come off of something historical. We've had a lot of historical things happen in the past couple of years, wouldn't you say? you know, I could go through them, but you have your own version of it. So I don't need to reiterate what that is, but I want you to look at this in a perspective of what they have been from that period of time. So the 1970s hippies, flower power, that's when I was growing up. I'm pretty darn happy about being born, but I think maybe that's why this um, interest rate resonates so much with me because in the 1970s, I was not a homeowner. I was still a teenager, but those rates were hovering between 7.29 and 7.73. Holy criminy. 1970s was the rates that were just what they're about to happen and be right now. But guess what happened in 1974 to 1980s? Oh, did I hear that? Inflation. <laughs> we keep having this conversation about inflation and that's what the Fed is doing because back then they weren't so on top of it. Um, oh my gosh, I'm going to forget the Fed chair. Volcker, I think is who was then, but I could be wrong. But the inflation was unchecked at that point. So in the 1970s, it was actually pretty cool. Uh, 7%. But guess what? It was unchecked. Inflation started to really take over and the interest rates by the end of 1978 were going up to 10%. And then as we started to go over into the 80s, the end of the 1970s, interest rates on mortgage were 12.9%. <gasps> Mind blown. Okay, 
I know if you all were at 12% or almost 13% right now, most of you would probably be fainting in the streets, doing something, and frankly, it does get worse. <laughs> because by the 1980s, all right, so the 70s started out in the 7s, they got up to 13%. By 1981, inflation then had risen to 9.5%. I think this is when Volcker came around and he wasn't paying attention. Forgive me if I'm wrong about that. Somebody can fact check me. But here's the thing. The inflation had risen to 9.5%. The Federal Reserve, of course, in their infinite wisdom, because that's the only tool they have in their belt to raise rate, interest rates rate, rate, rate. on the on overnight, overnight Fed borrowing rate. Right. They increased the federal funds rates to enough with the hikes that reached, get this, in the 1980s. Oh my God. And I remember this because I was doing loans then. 18.45%. That is crazy. That is crazy. But you know what happened is in each one of these episodes where the Fed pushed the rates like this, we had recessions. So the ultimate result and what is happening with this Fed movement as well is we are going to have a recession. Now, this time in the 1980s, when the interest rates hit 18, almost 19%, that really did impact the real estate industry. And the thing is, is what happens is if they let it go too far, it really does hurt the real estate community because people just feel like they're oppressed. It doesn't really mean that they can't do it. It just means that they're oppressed. So back in the 80s, there's plenty of graphs out there and you can go and find them. I, I was going to put a bunch of graphs up and I thought, oh, I'm going to put up too many. But the real estate market fell in half, basically 50% back then because of these interest rates. And I really believe that they may be looking at hindsight as some 2020 because that is not good for our market. That really helped um, create a recession back then in the 80s. And there was a lot of other things with the um, savings and loan and all that good happy stuff, but things were not going well. But by the 90s, the Fed started to reduce them again and they got into the single digits in the beginning of the 90s. Homeowners had purchased their home with a mortgage during the 80s, but the rates in the 18% range were able to cut their rates in half as rates. So everybody got a boost. You know, I think it's interesting, um, you know, I'm gonna do a, a video on the economy that this increase of interest rates. It's a double-edged sword. You can't keep raising interest rates without creating a recession. You can't keep increasing interest rates without increasing the unemployment rate. It's just impossible. So at the end of the day, um, what happened in the 90s, we were all um, actually having a good time. If you remember the 90s, w things were going well, mortgage rates came down, people were refinancing their houses, they, they increased the amount of a, a disposable income in their pocket, they could spend money, the economy started to recover. Well, hello, that's what's great. We love helping our community and our country to recover from a recession. I mean, who doesn't want to do that? But it also created a refinancing boom that they finally dropped interest rates, this is hilarious, to 7% in 1998. So I remember I was in Wichita Falls and got here in 1996 and I was calling for a refinance boom <laughs> at 7%. Is that hilarious? Right now, if you got 7% interest rate on your mortgage, you would be like this. And now if you put this into perspective, in 1996, I declared, and I've got paperwork to show it in the Times Record News, a refinance, refinance boom. boom. And it did in 1998. It allowed you to refinance multiple times because by the time 2000s came around, holy guacamole, I remember at that point writing um, loans at five and a half on a refinance for a 30 year fixed rate loan. And oh my gosh, people were flocking, flocking to my door. Now, if I tell somebody five and a half, which I had to two weeks ago, we're now at six and a half. They were like, oh my God, five and a half. Are you kidding me? That's terrible. But it's not. It's just a perspective. So this downward trend in mortgage rates stalled out. 
um, back in uh, the early um, 2000s. And of course, we all know what happened in the early 2000s. Then, um, you know, we had the dot com and a whole bunch of other things that happened. But the economy started to get really on track and then the mortgage industry lost their minds. And that's a whole different story and I'll tell you that chapter later. But because of that, they were giving loans to everybody. If you had a pulse, you got a loan. So what happened in the early 2000s set us up for another um, crash, which was based on the lack of fundamentals, if you will. And in that case with 2008 and the market, I mean, the whole economy crashed and we had a recession. What did the Fed do when we had a recession in 2008, 2009? Hmm, I don't know. Oh, they lowered the interest rates. They lowered the interest rates in an attempt to recover from 2008, 2009, 2010, and they kept them low because our economy did not recover completely in a very short amount of time. If you were paying attention to the last two presidents, you know that they were constantly trying to get the economy back on track. So the Fed participated in keeping those interest rates low, right? And now here we are in 2022, after two years of historically low rates, um, a economy that's on fire with the real estate, and here we are with what is perceived as inflation. And I can tell you a brief little snippet of what I'm about to talk on my uh, inflation video is, <sighs> You're not going to avoid inflation if you keep printing money. So enough said, that's a political statement. But the fact is, is that now we are now having the Fed raise the interest rates in order to curb inflation, to raise unemployment, believe it or not. And when we get there, which is going to be very short because the economy, they're not paying attention to how quickly this is moving, just like Greenspan didn't back in the early 2000s. The economy is moving so quickly towards recession. We've had two back-to-back -back quarters of GDP, of decreased growth, and so my prediction is by February, March at the very latest of next year, the Fed will have to reverse their position. But, you know, that's just because I've been around for a while. Um, if they don't, I, I just, I can't even foresee that it's not going to happen. But in any event, interest rates, I wanted to share with you that if you are now looking for a home and your interest rate and your lender tells you interest rate is going to be 6.5%, 7%, even 7.5%. Remember, in 1996... That was a refinance boom. That was a refinance boom. So everything's in perspective. Just know that it's a great time to buy no matter when. And homeownership is the best thing you can ever have. And so that's the end of my rant. I want to talk about this a little further. You can schedule a Zoom meeting with me in the first link below of the comments. And as I always say, y'all come back now. You hear? Bye.